Where are you going, Master Grade Barbatos? Aren't you gonna hang with us? Daddy needs an upgrade. What's up, people? Welcome to the Hobby Content Zone. My name is Liam, and I simp for Barbatos. So I bought the Premium Bandai Expansion Pack. Last video was g to V2, this video is Barbatos V2. When I first got Master Grade Barbatos, I was planning on using it for some stop-motion animation, so I only did basic customizations. I originally wasn't going to get the expansion pack, but then I realized it provided a good excuse for me to try and refine mech techniques, as well as get another mech to use in Gamma Wolves. Master Grade Barbatos has a lot of detail, so I know this is going to be a long project. Let's get clacking. Can't forget the forbidden sprinkles. Oh wait, hang on a sec. Okay, not gonna lie, that's pretty cute. I might have to paint these sometime. Now that I'm done building, I can definitely say this expansion set was worth the price. I had a lot of fun playing around with all the different combinations, and it was a great way to get even more enjoyment out of an already great Master Grade kit. I've already put the pieces I want to use on Barbatos, and all these leftover pieces are an absolute treasure trove of kit bashing material for all my future projects. Plus, there's the exceptional weapons that came with the original kit. My original customizations involved repainting the yellow pieces gold, adding the stickers, then panel lining. Then, I gave the inner frame a gloss top coat and the armor a matte top coat. Also, I just need to point out how much I love these high heels. Absolutely fabulous. I know what I want the weapons loadout to be, but I feel like it's missing something. Oh, I know. Sorry you had to sacrifice your backpack, Vidar. I'm gonna have to do a bit of extra work to get this jetpack to fit properly with Barbatos, and I wanted to do more than just glue it on as is, so I added these pieces from a different part of the expansion. This involved sawing the pieces down a bit, as well as adding some pieces to fill in spaces I didn't like the look of. Since this is going to be a monoposed model like my other Gamma Wolves projects, I used a combination of plastic cement and super glue to get it locked into position. Now that the backpack has been kit bashed on, it's time to clean everything up and get ready for painting. 
Removing the stickers was easy with toothpicks, but since they were underneath a top coat, I had to put in some extra work sanding away the residue along the edges. There's still some undesirable finish left in certain sections, but thankfully the style of painting I'm gonna do has many gradients and highlighting that will distract from this. Once everything has been properly washed, I partially reassembled and figured out what I wanted the final pose to be, then started selectively gluing the joints and moving parts that I think would cause difficulties while painting. I explained my reasons for gluing my gunpla in place in my goof video, but roughly explained, it's because these are intended for use in a tabletop game, so I want them to be sturdy enough to withstand repeated handling. With Barbatos, I'm doing my best to strike a middle ground between stability and articulation and gluing as few locations as possible. First part of painting will be to prime through the airbrush with Vallejo Black Surface Primer. Then a few small pieces are getting P3 Sanguine Base ahead of the rest of the armor due to how I'm painting and sub-assemblies. Next, my gold yellow to burnt orange shifter paint is going over the previous gold pieces. And lastly, I'm using Secret Weapon Dark Iron to base coat the underframe details that are showing. To bring out the details on these metallic sections, I'm using two Vallejo metallic colors and the classic dry brushing technique. And after two progressively lighter passes of this, I painted the pistons silver. Now the messy part is over and it's time to get the red and black armor base coated, which took a few thin coats, especially the red sections. Next is to get my gradient rich 130mm base ready using the same colors as my previous projects in this style. I go into full detail explaining the process of blocking colors and glazing in my goof video, so you should check that out if you want to see more. This is the fourth time I've done a base like this. I keep getting faster at it, and it hasn't started feeling tedious yet. When the base is finished, it's time to glue the leg and waist section down. I used extra thick super glue because I wanted a solid grip for such a large model, but I used almost a little too much because there was a little bit spilling out onto the base. But it didn't end up being an issue because I made sure the glue dried fully in open air to avoid the cloudy effect that sometimes happens with super glue. Now with the combined power of P3 Sanguine Base, Scorn Red, Vallejo Hot Orange, and Glaze Medium, I'm painting the red armor. First step is to do a rough edge highlight of every single relevant detail with a 50-50 mix of Sanguine Base and Scorn Red. Once the edge highlight has been blocked in, I use the same red mix with glaze medium to start laying down the gradient. Like I said with the base, this process is essentially the same as I did with my previous mechs for Gamma Wolves that you can watch in my Goof and Gunpla crossover videos. But Barbatos is definitely the most detailed model I've tried this technique on, and it took many hours of slowly glazing the gradient up to a 50-50 mix of Scorn Red and Hot Orange, and then going back to the dark end of the gradient to work up the colors again and tidy up the blends. If you enjoy spending long stretches of time working with a brush like me, this stage can be quite enjoyable. If not, there are plenty of other ways to paint Gunpla depending on what tools and materials are available, so pick your poison. When I'm finished with the gradients, I have to tidy everything up with another, neater edge highlight of pure scorn red. The rest is a fairly traditional process of adding hot orange into the mix for a second, thinner edge highlight that only goes onto the sharper edges, followed by a pure hot orange highlight only on the intersections and edges that I imagine would catch the light from above on the mech. The red parts are what took the longest, and I'll admit I did start to get a little fatigued throughout painting this project, but I really love the mech design and I wanted to push myself to take my style to the next level with this mech. RX 78-2 be like pew pew pew. Barbatos be like <laughs> It's no longer Gamma Wolf style. It's Model Mayhem style. Before moving on to the black sections, I delicately painted on the shifter paint to the symbol on the arm plates. And while you're here, you should do Barbie's nails. The black armor will be getting an edge highlight based around P3 Coal Black, mixed with the surface primer from before and eventually some titanium white. 
Since the red gradients are featured as the main color of the mech, I think that having a gradient also on the black would be too distracting. This edge highlighting process is similar to what we did on the red armor. Start with a rough line of every detail using a mix of black and coal black, then a crisper line of straight coal black, followed by two even crispier lines with progressively more white mixed in. Remember while painting that as you work up to brighter highlights, less is more. I like my mechs to have glowing weapons, so for this mace, I'm borrowing the gradient used on my heavy arms. After getting a base of sick green onto the sections that I want glowing, I quickly block in the gradient with some glaze medium and livery green mixed into the sick green. And when I have the messy lines blocked in, I do a couple thin glazes around the edges to simulate the glowing effect that I'm going for. Then I go in for the main edge highlight of pure livery green, followed by a second glaze to finalize the glowing effect, and a final edge highlight with white mixed into the livery green, reserved for only the sharpest edges. The same techniques for building up to that vibrant glowing green are used on the eyes, as well as the symbols on the knees and the backpack. With this style of painting, having a really smooth and clean finish isn't really a priority for me. However, the Vallejo surface primer combined with some user error involving the airbrush resulted in some unwanted texture, particularly on the backpack. So I think surface primer is still fine for use on miniatures, but the next gunpla I'm gonna paint like this, I think I'll try priming with my G-Paint instead, because I should be able to paint acrylics over top of lacquer, and that stuff just levels to a really nice smooth finish. Originally, the final step was a minor edge highlight of silver on the V-fin, but I ended up changing my mind on the red stripes of the backpack, so I repainted those, tidied up the glow effects, and added some black wash to the metallic details before giving everything a matte top coat. Like all my projects, it was a wild ride with a few missteps along the way, but I still made it to the end. It's part of my personal brand. I am very happy with how this project turned out, and I feel like I did the fantastic detail of the model justice. My main goal when I started was to give my Master Grade Barbatos an upgrade, and despite being transformed from a fully articulated model into a tabletop gaming piece, I'd say I succeeded. Speaking of articulation, before I got the expansion set, Barbatos was getting really flimsy from frequent reposing due to the stop motion, so I feel justified in gluing certain parts together. Otherwise, it would definitely be flopping all over the place and constantly dropping the mace, which would be a problem for painting and gaming. With all that being said though, I was able to retain some articulation at the waist, head, and parts of the arms, so that's an improvement I can apply to my future projects like this. If you're interested in the gaming aspect of this model, I'm still working out all the fine details, but I know that it's going to be the leader of a Ronin crew, including the Greys and Goof, who have major beef with the crew led by Heavy Arms. Leave a comment below if you want more nerdy details like that. Now don't talk to me or my sons ever again. <laughs> was one fabulous mech. Thank you for watching me paint it. Please annihilate those like, subscribe, and bell buttons. And if you'd like to support me further, follow me on social media or consider becoming a patron. I've had a lot of fun painting in this Model Mayhem style, and I'm definitely going to do some more projects like this. But I think for the next one, I'm going to do something a little different. Because it's important to take breaks and change things up every once in a while. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time in the Hobby Content Zone.